Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and today I want to tell you a little story about a student of mine who is really in love with artists like Tale of Us, Recondite, um, any of those life and death kind of deep techno artists. And he came to me with one of their tracks and he said, uh, "How I can't, get, I can't seem to get my percussion grooving the same way that their percussion is grooving. And the, the track in question was called Hold Me to the Light. It was actually a, a remix. And we're going to listen to it together now. We're going to analyze a little bit what's happening in the percussion and then we're going to recreate it. Uh, and specifically, we're, we're going to be talking about the hi-hats and we're going to create those in four levels of funkiness. Okay, so let's check out the track right now. What? That's so funky. <laughs> uh, two things. Three things. There's three things going on. One, there's a kick drum. Okay, that's pretty basic. There's a kick drum on every downbeat. One, two, three, four. Four beats to the bar, the basic of any house or techno. That should not surprise you. Then there's a little sample that's playing a polyrhythm. I just did a video about polyrhythms, so check that one out as well. Um, that's the sound that goes boom, 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 that doesn't line up with the beat. that kind of hollow bass sound. That's the polyrhythm. We're not gonna talk about that either. What we are gonna talk about is those shuffly little hi-hats, and we're gonna make those today, okay? We're gonna take four steps to create these hi-hats. Let's jump into Ableton. Okay, here we've got a little simple kick drum. Just a 707 kick drum. Boring as heck. Now, now to spice up this kick drum, we're gonna create a funky hi-hat loop next to it, but we're gonna do that in four steps, okay? Step number one is a simple 16 note hi-hat pattern, but the catch here is that we're gonna make it ourselves using operator, using white noise. Basically, we're gonna create white noise that plays every 16 note, and we're gonna use a bandpass filter to only keep those frequencies that we want, so the high kind of splashy frequencies. Let's jump into that. Let's create a MIDI track. Let's create a MIDI clip. Now on this MIDI clip, we're gonna to wanna to play every 16th note. So I'm gonna set my grid to 16th notes and I'm going to just create one 16th note, select it and then hit Control D or Command D on Apple to just copy it over just like that, okay. Now, a MIDI track in itself doesn't make sound. We actually have to put an instrument on there. So under Instruments, we can use Operator. Literally any synthesizer that can output white noise can do this. And pretty much every single synthesizer can output white noise. So you can do this with any synthesizer. In Operator, the basic setting is that it plays a sine wave. Let's listen to what that sounds like. Okay, we don't want it to play a sine wave, we want it to play white noise. So in operator, down here, we can select, instead of sine, we can select noise white. And what does that sound like? So it plays every 16th note, but it never stops because I've, I've programmed my notes to fill the entire uh, time here. Let's select all of our notes and pull the end back a little bit so that there's some space in between each and every note. So let's see what this sounds like. Okay, quite drastic. So we might wanna just change the decay time on this a little bit. So in the operator, we can go to the envelope and then we can work with the attack, decay, sustain, and release envelope. If you don't know how that works, check out the subtractive synthesis video that I did a few weeks ago that explains the architecture on how all this fits together. There are two ways that we can do this. We can either increase the release, that's gonna sound like this. Or what we can do, and this is my preferred way for hi-hats, is to bring the sustain down from zero down to minus infinity so that now really our decay time is actually the one that we want to care about about how long the sound will sound so let's let's see how that goes
Let's find ourselves a snappy setting and then let's just let that go for now. Now, this white noise plays frequencies equally loud for all frequencies. And we don't really want that. We only want the high sizzling frequencies. So we're going to put a filter on there. Instead of a low pass filter, we're going to put a band pass filter on there at a cutoff frequency of, let's start around three, four, five kilohertz. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, let's start about three. That's fine. We can bump up the volume a little bit now. Okay, that was level one. This is a simple 16 note pattern. That's where every note is exactly as uh, intense as every other note. Let me rename this. Now let's start making a little bit more groovy. I'm going to duplicate this channel. And on this second pattern, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some groove. Um, and what is groove? Well, groove, especially in Ableton, is an amalgam of two concepts. One concept is swing and the other one is velocity differences. So swing, swing is really when every second note, you play it with a little bit of delay. It makes things sound swung. It makes them sound a little bit more jazzy, funky, a little bit more groovy. Let me show you what that sounds like. If I take every second note, I'm just, oh, I'm going to hold down shift, select every second note, and I'm going to push them back a tiny bit, and you're going to see how this feels. So this is straight. This is what they call straight. So it's like a machine gun. And then I push it back. So there's some swing in there. That's what that's called. And a little bit of swing can make things sound a bit more human because that machine gun like perfection, sometimes that's not what you're looking for. So I said that groove is an amalgam of two concepts, velocity, no, well, swing and velocity. So let's change the velocity. And in Ableton, that's those little red lollipops underneath each one of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the velocity of the first note is pretty low because that's the one that's going to fall at the same time as the kick. And we don't really want to accent that one. Then we want it to be somewhere in the middle. Then we want it to be up high, then back somewhere in the middle. That's going to create a feeling where this one is going to be louder than the other three. And these ones are going to be louder than this one. And I would like to copy and paste this across the timeline. So in fact, to do that, I'm just going to delete what's there. And I'm just going to control select all this and hit control D or command D to duplicate it across the timeline. Let's see what this sounds like. It actually doesn't change anything because the velocity is not mapped to anything in our synthesizer. And we need to change that manually. So we go into our synthesizer. And if we look at the oscillator, which is creating noise, there's a, a parameter here that says vel, which means how, lo how loud is a sample going to be played in response to the velocity. So let's put that up a little bit. Let's put it at like 35. And now let's see what that gives. Do you hear how suddenly instead of it going equally loud every time, whenever the kick hits, it's a bit more quiet. And in between the kicks on the upbeat, that's called, it goes ta 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 So it's like this. Let me exaggerate it. That's a bit exaggerated. So let's put it back down. Let's put it at 50. Cool. What we've done now is we've created a groove. Ableton has this system called grooves here on the left as well. And to be honest, I almost never use it in my own productions because if you understand the concept, how it's used in terms of timing of the notes and velocity changes, really, you don't really need Ableton's grooves. But anyway, you can use them, see how, see how you like it. But right now, what we've done is we've applied a simple groove. So let's move on to the third level, which is to do a funky groove. To make a funky groove, we're going to duplicate what we've done. We're going to rename this funky groove. 
And what's different between a regular groove and a funky groove? Well, I mean, I've just invented the word, so don't try looking this up anywhere. But the difference between a simple groove and a funky groove, in my mind, is that a funky groove accentuates offbeat, um, the offbeat notes. It's syncopated rhythm. So what does that really mean? Well, let's reset all the velocities of everything and put them down low. So all the velocities are pretty low. Let's see what that sounds like. Cool. What we're going to do is we're going to accentuate the first note. Then we're going to leave the second and the third one the way it is. And then the fourth one. And then again, we're going to skip two. And then this one. And we're going to skip two. And then this one. And then we're going to skip these two. And then this one. In a way, it's kind of like we're accentuating every third sixteenth note, almost like we're building a tiny little polyrhythm into our loop. Check this out. So here we go. We've got this. We've got this secondary rhythm going over the kick drum. That's actually quite funky. There we go. That's level three. Now let's move on to level four, and that is. We're going to create some macros to control this sound to give it a, some more expressive power. To do level four, we're going to duplicate this again and we're going to call this the expressive groove. Now, what are we going to what are we going to change? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go to operator and we're going to give ourselves some controls so that we only have to think about two buttons, let's say two macros that we can change that will modulate and change the sound to fit our song better. That may sound technical, but all it means is that instead of having a million different controls on the synthesizer, we're just going to simplify our life and say that two controls are the most important ones. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to we're going to group this operator into an instrument rack, which gives us the power to assign macros to different things. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to we're going to take this decay time and we're going to map it to macro one and the filter cutoff frequency. We're going to map it to macro two. We're going to give them good names. So hi-hat decay and hi-hat brightness. We're going to give them groovy colors just because we're groovy like that. And now these are two parameters that I can play with and let's see how that sounds. In fact, one further improvement that I can make to this is I can increase the release time to be very long because I think I can feel it cutting off unnaturally. So let's see how this sounds. Yeah, this way with the long release time, whenever we open it up a little bit, it becomes like splashy, almost as if there's kind of an echo on it. So that's that's really cool. And then the brightness, we can bring it up and down. To sort of push or pull energy out of our track. Two simple improvements to this even further could be to put up a simple delay. Let's put on a little bit of delay. Maybe make it a ping pong delay. Put on a simple reverb. Let's make it a like a hall reverb, medium hall, not too wet. And see how this sounds. The hall reverb is a bit too long. There we go. We've got our expressive groovy, funky, 16th note hi-hat pattern that we created ourselves with white noise in operator. Let's listen to the original again, just to feel and now to recognize what they did using this technique. Cool. And that's that. That's that. 
we just did a very simple hi-hat trick here. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it certainly was enlightening to try to reverse engineer this from a student. Um, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, join one of our boot camps or one of our deep dive programs or one of our coaching sessions. If you like this video, just hit like down there, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. My name is Oscar. This was Underdog Electronic Music School. Stay producing. Be good. Bye-bye. Would you like to try making electronic music? That's what we do at Underdog Electronic Music School, based in Brussels. We offer a program called the Bootcamp Program, which is designed for absolute beginners who want to start having fun making their own music, but who don't have experience yet doing that. We run online classrooms in small groups where you and a real teacher go through 12 classes where you see from A to Z how to make electronic music and how to start having fun. You can ask any questions at any moment and you can also focus on the genres and artists that you love so that you can start making the music that you are passionate about. Check out the details on www.underdog.brussels and get in touch for a test session or to sign up for one of the classes. So, until we hear from you, see you online.